good day and welcome to the introduction of our new preaching series, What is Your Rhythm? What is your rhythm of life? What is your rhythm of work and rest? Both of which God commands. Maybe your answer is that your rhythm is very busy and you don't have much of a choice. Well, John Ortberg said the following. He said, hurry is not just a disordered schedule, but hurry is a disordered heart. So it's not just a chaos schedule, but it's also a chaos heart underneath. And so the solution to an over busy life is not more time. It is to slow down and to simplify our lives around what really matters. Change your rhythm. If you are a Jesus follower, in addition to trusting Him and receiving His payment on the cross for our sins, you follow in, in His ways and, and you learn from Him. You are an apprentice of Jesus. You are a student of Jesus. You are a disciple of Jesus. And so, if you want to experience the life of Jesus, you have to adopt the lifestyle of Jesus. Now, a, a regular rhythm uh, of time of rest is, is right here in the opening uh, story of Scripture. Before humans turned away from God, before God established His partnership, His covenant with the nation of Israel, a pattern of resting on the seventh day was established by God. There was a pattern of both work and rest. And so we call this seventh day rest Sabbath. God has created us for relationship with Him and relational trust has always been at the heart of God's Sabbath invitation. Rel relational trust has always been at the heart of God's Sabbath invitation. But the nation Israel struggled to receive it. Um, as you would finish reading the Old Testament, um, we are left wondering, um, will Sabbath rest ever be received the way that God intended it to be? Now, over the past two years uh, during COVID and just past uh, post COVID, I believe God wants to get our attention, so to speak. There's, there's something that God is saying, but we are not hearing, we are not listening, uh, and we are, we are sidetracked in so many other things. But what I do believe God clearly wants to say to us is that we need to establish uh, a healthy rhythm for our lives. We need to establish, redeem, set in place, change uh, our rhythm so that we would have a healthy biblical rhythm for our lives. And so over the next four weeks, you know, we will be looking at four principles of Sabbath rhythm. Four principles. Stop. Rest. Delight. And the fourth one, worship or contemplate. And today I want to just do an introduction and give you three reasons to get into the rhythm of practicing Sabbath rest. So, number one, the first reason is uh, we are designed to rest. We, you and me, we are designed to rest. So let's read Genesis 1 verse 27. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them. And then we fast forward and go to chapter 2, and I read verse 2 and 3. And on the seventh day God finished his work that he had done, and he rested, he Sabbath on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day. So he blessed that seventh day. He said it was good. There's good coming from that day. There's a benefit coming from that day. God blessed the seventh day and made it holy. He set it apart because on it God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. Now, since we are created in God's image, we are to obey the limits in our work. There are certain limits to the way that you and I are designed, created by God, and specifically what pertains to work. Did God rest because He was exhausted? 
<laughs> no, we, we know that, that God, the all-powerful, all-knowing, all-present, sovereign, only creator of the universe, did not need to rest because he was tired. Or, or did he rest maybe to offer us, his image bearers, to offer us a model or a cycle or a rhythm of work and rest? Isn't that maybe what he is doing here? Giving us a rhythm, a model of work and rest. And we've been created in his image to follow that. Now you see, work and rest are not opposing forces, but they are elements of, of a rhythm that make uh, good work and true rest possible. Th these opening chapters of, of Genesis communicate the importance of of rest to God. God says work uh, is important, creativity is important, but so is rest to God. But how will these concepts or, or this idea of rest, Sabbath, stop, rest, develop throughout the rest of, of the Bible story that we read? Now as you keep on reading the Bible story, you would later find out that the nation of Israel are commanded in Exodus 20, uh, verse 8 to 11, they are commanded to practice the Sabbath uh, and that God's rest is meant as an example for us to follow. The way that He worked and the way that He rested is an example for us to follow. However, as you continue to read, you see again and again uh, the nation Israel reject God's design for rest repeatedly. And uh, for example, you can go and read in Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 12 to 13. Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 12 to 13. So, the first thing is we see uh, why we need to address this whole thing uh, of, of rest, of rhythm of rest, of Sabbath, uh, why it's important to, to lay a foundation. And, and, and before we get into the, the four principles, number one is as we are created, we are designed by God to rest. And we follow in His pattern of rest. Number two, uh, Sabbath is a form of worship. Sabbath is a form of worship. When we stop our work on whatever is our seventh day, and, and your seventh day or your Sabbath day can be any, any day or it can be any portion of a day. And, and later on we'll say a little bit more about that as we continue in the series. Now, now we, we acknowledge that our lives, when we set apart a day or a, a section or part of a day, we then acknowledge that our life is not defined by work or productivity. In a sense, we, we reject some part of our autonomy and we're actually embracing our dependence on God, our Creator. Otherwise, we live with the illusion that, that life is completely under human control. And that is just an illusion. Part of making Sabbath a stop and rest and delight and contemplate, part of making that a regular part of our work life is, is, is actually a visible outward testimony that acknowledges God is at the center of my life. God is at the center of our lives. Now, in addition to that, the, the rhythm of Sabbath rest comes down to an act of trust. And that is also what worship is about. Sabbath being an act of worship. Worship is also an act of trust. To practice Sabbath rhythm, we must dare, so to speak. We must dare to trust God to provide for our needs. As, as Jesus speaks in Matthew 6, we must trust God. Him for our needs rather than working all out to provide for our needs by ourselves. Now, this can be difficult both for, for those of us who struggle with a view of not having enough and for those who struggle with the danger of not recognizing what is enough. <laughs> because the question is, when is enough enough? <laughs> the problem is, um, it's difficult to draw a line and say this is enough because some of us cannot draw that line and cannot make a distinction when is enough enough and for others of us we are struggling just we, we don't have enough and we don't even have a line maybe. 
but but learning to trust God for our provision it, it's an ongoing challenge it's an ongoing challenge particularly if we are prone to compulsive work habits listen to how a a bible teacher uh, observe observes the culture uh, that that he lives in he says the following then he says the more we want the more revenue we must produce to get it the more i want the more money i must make to get it and now the more revenue we must produce the more money i must now produce the longer and the harder i need to work so we build larger homes we buy more cars and we take on additional financial burdens and then we find ourselves having to work harder to pay for it so more work less rest it leads to more work and to less rest now the rhythm of sabbath rest is a a regular rejection turning our back on on our own selfish desires and our own envy for more and more and more uh, it is a statement to ourselves the sabbath rhythm this rhythm of rest is a is a statement to ourselves that there are other things in life besides producing and consuming producing and consuming producing and consuming and that and that there is more to our identity than what we do or what we produce what i do and what i produce does not determine my identity and the culture around us is set up in such a way every advertisement every social media wherever you turn the culture around us is set up in such a way to make you falsely believe that your identity and your value and your worth is directly linked to what you do and what you produce and that is a lie we are not the sum total of our bank accounts we are not the sum total of our work we are not the sum total of our uh, of, of, of even the uh, the accomplishments we have we are not the sum total of even the responsibilities we carry and take note that that compulsive work habits work 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 are, are not limited to those who want to get more simply of uh, desire or envy but but it's also a temptation for those who struggle to simply provide in basic necessities it's also a challenge for those who struggle just to survive daily to survive through just living and having shelter and food to just care in basic necessities for themselves and for their families and, and so even for them if, if that is you so, so the drive behind your overworking could also be stress and worry the same way that it can be selfish desires and envy uh, the drive can also be stress and worry and i overwork and overwork i'm not sure i'm stressing i'm worrying that will god really provide for me no i i need to help god i need to work harder maybe god will not or does not want or cannot provide but that's not what jesus says in matthew 6 and so sabbath friends is a reminder that ultimately life depends not on on your hard work and on my hard work and on our efforts but on god's provision and grace yes we work hard yes there is our efforts yes it is important yes we do have a significant role to play but ultimately the word ultimately ultimately life does not depend on us but on God's provision and grace. And we need to learn that and rest in that. And, and maybe wasn't that the message that, that amongst many other things, whatever other reasons and what, wherever you want to go to, but I'm sure we can at least agree that throughout the COVID period, this is a definite lesson that, that you and I as Christ followers had to learn. That life ultimately, ultimately life does not depend on us or whatever but it depends on God's provision and grace and we need to rest in that and this is a hard lesson to learn and it usually takes trial and error for us to really get it into our heads and get it into our hearts 
It is a hard lesson. Even the nation Israel discovered that. They discovered how hard it is depending on God's provision of manna in the desert, for example. And so when you, when you turn to Exodus 16 and, and you read that account in Exodus 16, God has just rescued the nation Israel out of slavery, out of Egypt. Uh, they are in the desert and they're going to be there for, um, for 40 years. God is leading them. And then you read in Exodus 16, and let me highlight a couple of verses, but you can go and read the whole chapter uh, chapter 16 and just see if you can find some of those principles of how hard it is for them to learn to trust God and to rest in that. Just there uh, at the end of verse 3, um, uh, you know, Israel said to Moses, Would that we have died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the meat pots and ate bread to the full. For you have brought us out into the wilderness to kill the whole assembly with hunger. They were saying, well, we'd rather go back there. Uh, and this to trust God uh, is, is a difficult thing. But when we were there, we, we had more than enough. And, and then the Lord said to Moses, behold, I'm about to rain bread uh, from heaven for you and the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not whether we will rest in trusting because trusting God uh, is also an active thing but it's also an active rest and not taking things in our own hands and control verse 17 um, they, gathered, uh, they gathered and now when they woke up they saw uh, the manna they saw this bread then they gathered, some gathered more, some gathered less, but when they measured it with an omer, with a, with a measurement, okay, when they measured it, whoever gathered much, okay, had nothing left, <laughs> and whoever gathered little had no lack. How significant is that? So I said, well, this is how much I need for my family. And I actually, compared to you, I gathered a whole lot. But, but that, was, that was enough. That was enough for us. And whoever gathered a little, uh, that was also enough for them. They did not lack. And Moses said to them in verse 19, Let no one leave any of it over till the morning. So meaning, don't eat a little bit and think to yourself, I better save some and leave over for just in case. What if? For the what if tomorrow. What if God doesn't provide tomorrow? Then I'm taking, the, uh, I'm taking things into my own hands. I'm controlling. I'm just keeping behind. And Moses says, no, God instructs you, to don't leave anything up until the morning. But they did not listen to Moses, verse 20. Some left part of it till the morning, and it bred worms and stank. And so it was rotten, and basically they could not eat it, and they had to throw it away. Um, and then verse 22, on the sixth day they gathered twice as much bread. Okay, so God commanded them, and Moses said to them, this is what the Lord commanded. Verse 23, uh, tomorrow is a day of solemn rest. It's a day of rest, okay, patterning, patterning after God, after being created in His image of His rest. A holy Sabbath, a holy stop, a holy come to a, a, a stop. Uh, to the Lord, it is to the Lord, it's about for His glory and honor. Bake what you will bake and boil what you will boil, and all that is left over lay aside to be kept till the morning. So they laid it aside till the morning as Moses commanded them, and it did not stink and there were no worms in it. <laughs> okay, because they followed God's pattern and, and were obedient to that. And then verse 29, see, the Lord has given you the Sabbath. <laughs> okay, so you have, not be, you have not been given to the Sabbath. Okay, so, but the Sabbath has been given to you for a purpose. There's a purpose, and we need to understand that. Okay, there's a purpose, and we will get to, to, to that right now. Well, what is the purpose as well in that? But, but we see that, that we were crea being created for rest, um, in the Sabbath, and practicing the Sabbath, having a rhythm of Sabbath and rest, is also worship, because it is unto the Lord. And the Lord has given you the Sabbath. Therefore, on the sixth day, He gives you bread for two days. God has given, so it's meaning I need to rest in God's provision for tomorrow. So the rhythm of Sabbath helped me, remind me to rest in God's provision for tomorrow. Um, but it is also an act of worship because it is unto the Lord. It is set aside. 
He has given you the Sabbath, a holy Sabbath to the Lord, verse 23. So, we have been created, designed, wired, hardwired by God for rest. Not just for work, yes, we've been hardwired for work, but also for rest. And those go together, it's like two pedals of a bicycle, work and rest, work and rest. You cannot just rest and no work, you cannot just work and no rest. They go together, and, and we see that displayed right in the creation account. And then secondly, uh, we just saw that, that, that Sabbath is also a way and a means of worship. Thirdly, Sabbath is meant for our good. Sabbath is meant for our good. And we see the clearest picture of God's presence on earth in the life of Jesus. Jesus is God come in the flesh to live amongst His people. And Jesus had a lot to say about the Sabbath and, and, and the true rest that God intends for humanity. Not following legalistic rules and regulations, but the true rest that God intends for humanity. Now, while religious people over the centuries intended to, uh, to pile up regulations and defining, trying to define what, con what constitutes now keeping the Sabbath and doing this and doing that and getting all, all uh, trapped up and painting themselves in a corner with, with all difficult uh, rules and regulations and adding and adding and adding, Jesus said clearly, that God made the Sabbath for us. As He said it here to the Israelites in Exodus, God made the Sabbath for us, for our benefit, for our good. It is for us. In His Gospel, Matthew uh, includes a series of, uh, of connected stories where Jesus is now confronted. Jesus here is now confronted by Israel's religious leaders and teachers. Okay, the scribes and the Pharisees and the Sadducees. The, Jesus is confronted by them. And then on one Sabbath day, the leaders object to Jesus' friends, His disciples, picking uh, a corn as they were walking through a, f a field. And we find that in Matthew 12, verse 1 to 2. At that time, Jesus went through the grain fields. Uh, on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry and they began to pluck heads of grain and to eat. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. So, not only this, they then also object to Jesus uh, uh, healing a man with a shriveled hand. So, in verse 9, uh, he, that Jesus, went on from there and entered their synagogue. And a man was there with a withered hand or a shriveled hand. And they asked him, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? So that they might accuse him. You see, even the motive of their hearts are wrong. Uh, he said to them, Which one of you who has a sheep, if it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will not take hold of it and lift it up? Of how much more value is a man than a sheep? So, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Uh, then he said to the man, stretch out the, your hand, and the man stretched it out, and it was restored, healthy like the other. Now, so they not only objected to Jesus' disciples eating, to Jesus healing this man, uh, and now in verse 9 to 14, the Pharisees then went out, they conspired and how to destroy him. Uh, they were saying that Jesus is now ignoring to keep the Sabbath that we found in Exodus 20. So as God commanded the nation Israel, gave them the Ten Commandments uh, in Exodus 20, God gave it and He said to you, you're not allowed to work. I said, Jesus, you see, um, your, your actions here um, is now uh, going against, you are not keeping the law. Uh, but Jesus' response clarifies the true definition of Sabbath here. Yeah. Uh, he's affirming His role and identity as the promised Messiah. He's, he's, he, is, he is the promised Messiah because in verse 8, uh, just after he then shared the story of the eating, uh, his disciples were eating. Let's just go back to, to chapter 12. And then in verse 3, he said to them, Have you not read what David did when he was hungry? Those who were with him, how they entered the house of God, uh, the temple, how they ate the bread of the presence. Uh, which it was not lawful for him to eat, nor for those who were with him, but only for the priests. 
Okay, and so it says, well, David, you know, he did something that was not lawful. Um, and then verse 8 is the key here as well. For the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. And so we're going right back to, to the Exodus account that we read in Exodus 16. And Jesus is basically here through the statement where Jesus says, well, I am Lord of the Sabbath. He's, he is saying that, you know, the Sabbath is all about me. He is saying, I am the God that your forefathers followed. I, I am the God of Exodus. He, he is the God. And he is, he, this statement is pointing to his divinity. This statement is pointing to the fact that Jesus is God. Now, when you read Matthew 12 and those two accounts of the disciples eating and Jesus referring to David, uh, we might imagine that the connection between these two episodes is hunger. Okay, so when you're hungry, you can then, you can then eat on a Sabbath or you can make food on the Sabbath. When you're hungry, it's permissible to work to feed yourself. Okay, um, even if it means working on the Sabbath, okay, so you're hungry, you've got no choice, so that's okay, I can work on the Sabbath. But, but this is not what, what Jesus is saying here. Uh, Jesus draws somewhat of a different conclusion, and, and that is in verse 8, when he says, the Son of Man is the Lord of the Sabbath. So now this suggests that practicing the Sabbath is, is grounded in understanding God's heart. It's not about following rules and regulations. It's, it's, about, it's not about, oh, I'm not allowed to work on the Sunday. No, it's, there, there needs to be a rhythm of work and rest. And you need to understand the rhythm of rest. And you need to understand that rest is not just sleeping and no working. It entails a lot of other things. And, and those are the things that we're going to address as we continue with the series. No, that, but, but, the, but Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath. And that the Sabbath is grounded in understanding. Understanding the Father's heart rather than developing increasingly detailed rules and expectations and more and more and more. No, Jesus understood the heart of the Sabbath. That the Sabbath, He's the Lord of the Sabbath. So the Sabbath is pointing to Him. It's pointing to relationship. And that the Sabbath is there for man. It's there to serve man. It's there for our good. Jesus understood the heart of the Sabbath, what God's original command was pointing to. To understand Jesus' point now, we, we have to look at the context in which uh, Matthew plays these stories uh, about the Jesus' disciples eating on the Sabbath, this whole Sabbath um, argument. Understand the context in which we find them. Uh, this is where it's important to, to read a bit wider than this. Matthew records these Sabbath controversies immediately after quoting Jesus' words about rest. Matthew eleven twenty eight to 29. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. All this talk of rest right before a passage that deals with the Sabbath. This is no mistake. The, the, the people have become weary and burdened by the heavy weight of observing the overbearing religious uh, rules of Sabbath keeping which was weighing them down. They missed the heart of the whole thing. The emphasis was on the rules and not on the heart and the principles that God is, is, is bringing through. They were following the letter of the law while they were missing God's intent behind the command. And, and so even that is important. So as we study, just, just as, a, as a short commercial break, as we read, for example, Paul's letter to, to any one of those other Christians or churches, wherever we read the letter, when we read these things, we need to understand the author's intent. What is the intent of the author? What is the message that the author wants to bring across? Let's see into the heart of that. And Jesus is saying, you, you're following the letter of the law, and, and as you're doing that, you're actually missing God's intent behind the command. He says, yes, the command is there to follow, but what is His intent? And what is the principle, and what do we need to learn from that? Jesus wants to clarify the meaning of the Sabbath for them. The people are in need of rest. Uh, they, are, they, they are in need to, to stop working. Stop working and be present with God. 
to stop work and to be present with God. And it is for their own benefit. As you read 11, 28 to 29, it is for their own benefit. Jesus is now here to usher in the full promise. The full promise. Jesus is God's rest. And the people can come to Him and find the true seventh day rest that God intended. Jesus reminds the people of God's original intention for the Sabbath. God's original intention for the Sabbath is, is unity with God. The, the Israelites in the desert missed it, but it was unity with God. It is enjoyment of creation, being grateful with, of creation, being unity and with God created in the same way that He said, Adam, take care of this. Eve, take, you guys take care of this. Work the land. Enjoy this. Take care. Uh, be in unity with creation, but also with one another. Okay, and again, there, there, there's, the, there's first and foremost the vertical unity that it brings across, but also the horizontal unity. It is to the glory of God. Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath. It is to His glory. But Sabbath is given to us as well. It is for our enjoyment of God and our enjoyment of one another. Uh, all this is for our benefit. It is for our good. And so Jesus teaches here that the Sabbath points to Him. Uh, even He says that he is, the, he is the true temple. He is the true temple. He is the true tabernacle. He came to tabernacle with us. It points to Him. He is the true sacrificial lamb. And when we trust Jesus' invitation to come to Him and truly rest, we become temples we become places, we can become people where His presence can dwell in increasing measure. And that is good for us and it is good for the people around us. Because then we truly also become the light of Jesus and the hands and the feet of Jesus. When followers of Jesus live in a, a Sabbath rhythm, we live as if this this restoration uh, has already taken place. We take a break from the broken rhythm of, of a hustle and a bustle and the hardship of this world. Uh, this system uh, that is set aside, we, or this world system, we take a break from the hardship of this world system and, and we, we set aside a time to honor Jesus' rule, to enjoy His presence, to enjoy one another, to enjoy His creation and to extend rest to the world around us. Okay, and so we know that one day when Jesus comes back, there's a restoration back to the way that God intended it, way back to Genesis 1 and 2, a restoration back to that. Now part of being in that, that Sabbath rhythm and rest and work, the rhythm of rest and work, the biblical rhythm of rest and work, we, we already have the, the privilege to partake in that restoration uh, of, and, and we are actually uh, showing what is forthcoming. We already do that. So it's not perfect now, but one day what we're already practicing will be perfect when Jesus returns. And so these three reasons uh, we need to grow and make progress into. It's these three reasons okay, that we have just mentioned and say, you know what, we are designed to rest. Um, rest is Rest is worship and rest is good for us. We need to grow into understanding that, making progress into a rhythm of Sabbath. Making progress into a rhythm of Sabbath. And so, may I just say this as well, that, that we are not expected to live by Israel's Old Testament laws, nor are we made right by God or accepted by God through keeping these laws. No, for that Jesus came and by grace and through faith in Him and His finished work on the cross, we are being made right with God and we are holy in Christ and being made holy and accepted by God in and through Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. However, the, the wisdom of these laws remain and, and the law of the Sabbath or this command of the Sabbath is rich with significance for us today. Uh, and so even with the, with the Ten Commandments, uh, we, we are still to honor our parents. Uh, we are still not to, uh, to commit murder, etc. We are still to only follow Jesus and have no idols. But yes, the question is, what does this 
this practice or the rhythm. I, I prefer this word rhythm of rest. What does this work uh, or what does this practice or this rhythm look like for Jesus followers in the 21st century? Does it mean attending a weekly church service? Is, is that then now I'm fulfilling that? You see, we should again just be careful to, to tick boxes and to follow the letter of the law. It doesn't mean just attending weekly church service or turning off my, my work email or volunteering in the community and serving the community. Um, doesn't matter what day your Sabbath rhythm is. A uh, Sabbath could certainly include these activities that I mentioned. But, but the whole of the Bible story, we need to read, when we read, <coughs> excuse me, when we read and study the rhythm of the Sabbath, again, you need to read the whole Bible. Uh, yes, the, the whole of the Bible story seems to emphasize the purpose, the purpose of the Sabbath, rather than specific rules for observing it. But the purpose of the Sabbath, and it's, it's so deeply embedded in the whole creation story and the fact that we are created in God's image. Sabbath is not a commandment we are bound to, but it's rather a promise we are invited to enjoy. A promise that we are invited to enjoy. There's good benefit for, for us. It is God's a rhythm design. It's God's design rhythm for His glory and for our good. And we show that as followers of Jesus Christ, we trust Him and we rest in Him alone. And true joy is found and true peace is found in Him alone when we follow a Sabbath rhythm. Sabbath, Sabbath rest is an invitation to practice for eternity in God's presence. As I said before, it is, is basically, we are basically practicing the presence of God and we are basically practicing what we are going to do when Jesus returns in, in fullness and in perfection. So it is a practice for eternity. We are already practicing how we will be in eternity in God's presence. Because there will be a work that will be fully restored the way it's intended to be and rest. And so this rhythm of work and rest will be perfected. The fullness of that we will experience when Christ returns. And so now we are ready. Just as the church is an outpost of heaven. Just as the church is this, this display of the multicolored, multifaceted wisdom of God. Uh, our, our rhythm of Sabbath is also a display of God's work and rest in the new heaven and new earth. And so when we follow the Sabbath rhythm, we take part in the new creation story, new creation story, and we setting the stage, so to speak, setting the stage for God to make His dwelling place once again on the earth as we read at the end of Revelation. And so friends, next week, uh, we take a closer look at the first principle of the rhythm of Sabbath, namely, stop. I want to invite you to go and read these scriptures again, to go and pray and ask Holy Spirit to speak to your heart and to speak to your mind. May, may He speak in your heart and mind for us to bring an understanding of what God is saying to us uh, through His Word and what he intends and so Lord Jesus we come to you thank you for this beautiful invitation Lord at the heart of all this we see and we read and help us to understand your invitation uh, that we will come to you all who are heavy laden and burdened physically spiritually emotionally we come to you and only in you Jesus we find rest only Jesus your yoke uh, and, and Lord, we want to take that, your yoke, we want to learn from you, because you are gentle and lowly in heart. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that we can learn and grow and make progress to find true rest, Jesus, in you alone. Amen. Friends, may you have a blessed week. All the saints and angels they bow before your throne and all the elders cast their crowns
stands before the Lamb of God and seen you worthy of it all.
You were worthy of it all.